Okay, so we're going to do mathematics and lines. It includes art and nature. We are going to talk about straight lines made by human beings. And I just love this picture of this little boy because it says so much. He is, um, he's, this is Egyptian. The idea is, well, it's obviously modern, but it's portraying the idea. He's saying, I got it. And what he's got is a right angle. And he has got a right angle because what he's got there is a three, four, five triangle. And that, um, at that time, people knew about Pythagoras' theorem. And they knew that for certain, if, if the square on the hypotenuse, 5 squared 25 was 3 squared plus 4 squared, which it is. Then the angle where his hand is holding it, um, the rope against the vertical brick wall and the ground will be a right angle. So that's how for, you know, centuries, um, millennia, people have made right angles. And why are right angles, indeed, why are straight lines important? Well, you see that in the middle picture. We'll come back to the little boy, but you can see from the middle picture, Caroline, you're the engineer. Why are straight lines important? Well, straight lines are important in buildings, in structure, um, because to, to give it straight, I mean, curved lines can are fine on roofs and things, but if you're if you've got if you've got load bearing, it has to be rigid. So if you um, if you're if you you want to put a weight on top of something, it it will hold it. If it's rigid and straight, it'll hold it. But if you bend it, bleh, it it will collapse. So it has a lot more strength if it's straight and rigid. Yes, and and we we might have drawn a picture of a bridge for, for um, with all those you know um, braces that can the, the the what makes gives the bridge its strength being straight, um, and that is by the way Dubai. I thought that was a nice contrast. The little boy's foot is pointing to this very modern city which has been built in the last fifty years. Um, but yes, there's another thought I have about straight lines. If you draw a, a floor plan of a you know house or something, if your angles at the corner are not ninety degrees, and your <laughs> your ang uh, and your lines are not straight, <laughs> not only will your walls likely fall down for the reasons Caroline has given, but then when you draw the fourth line, it won't meet up with the corner that you started with. <laughs> you, if you're you either you're going to either have a diverging lines or converging lines, so they're either going to meet up too soon or just never ever ever meet up yeah, yeah and you might deliberately make your room other than um rectangular but usually most of the rooms are rectangular which comes to the uh, the picture I, I thought those two cities juxtaposition was rather nice you've got new york a town plan of new a city plan rather a street plan of new york with the streets and the avenues and you have got, that's, you know, that, that was planned hundreds of years ago. But you have got the modern city of Dubai, which is super modern. And along the front there, the more sort of conventional Western style buildings um, in the, one of the suburbs of, of, of Dubai. I mean, Dubai is an amazing place. Have you ever been there, Caroline? No, I haven't had the pleasure yet. Well, it it is. Uh, I mean, in some ways, um, you know, uh, it is. It, well, in some ways, it's perhaps a bit sad that the um, the wonderful Arab Arab people who lived in in their um, communities in in the desert, in tents, have have now moved into the modern world. Um, but in another way, it's it's quite spectacular. And when I was there, I walked into the into the centre of the very very old part of Dubai, and street markets and things. And that was that was another world, very different from the ones you see in that picture. So, in the, to go back to New York before we leave it, 
um, there the, the streets and the avenues are perpendicular and, and they are all of them <clears throat> more or less straight. It's a sort of grid plan. As yeah, Amer American blocks, when they talk about a block in the States, it usually is straight, at least in mm. the cities. Not mm. so much the suburbs, but in the cities, it definitely is. And um, there's such a contrast to the old country in um, where I live in England. You don't just don't see straight. No. And where you are in Cambridge, you just don't see straight streets. No, I mean, the, the good old Roman roads. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, they had the. And of course, that was their idea of the straight line being the shortest distance between two points which we will we'll come back to later this, in this, in this programme. But there's a couple of other things before we move on that I'd like to mention about, first of all, about the buoy and the right angle. You can see there that the ship's mast and, um, is, uh, is, of a, it is a straight line. It's got to be straight because, again, it's, it's got to hold up the sail and for the reasons Caroline gave, it must be straight. And then you have got um, also what I thought was quite interesting, just coincident, really, that the straps on the boys' sandals, some of those are straight too, aren't they? Where they go around his, his, um, yeah. his ankle. I mean, the interesting thing about straight lines is um, when you take a, um, um, a wrapper off a can, like a can of Heinz beans or something, um, if you take the wrapper off, you can flatten it and although it's a circle around the can and that strap around the boy's angle, an ankle is a circle, when you flatten it out, if you flattened it out, it would be straight, a straight line in the, in the sense we usually think of as straight lines. Yeah. What about the pyramids at Giza? Isn't that a lovely picture? It certainly is, and it actually also reminded me, oh dear, the name it just came to me, that the architect in Barcelona that makes all the curvy lines is actually a lot harder to make a strong structure out of curves than it is to make a strong structure out of straight lines. So uh, he was actually quite clever because he managed to do it. <laughs> but it, it, the logical thing and the thing that they could do and they could repeatedly do and is is make the straight edges although if you get up close of course they're not actually lines they're made up of big blocks but the, that's that they well, make well, up a straight line yes well i mean <clears throat> the, the sort of overall is straight but the, the, they are they are sort of steps aren't they yes um but so again that is extraordinary the engineering of it that they actually managed to create these blocks to how many thousand, four thousand years ago, and and effectively make these really straight lines. Up if you average it out, they they are they're really nice um, shapes. And and it's the, the, to me, it always boggles my mind at just how amazing engineers are. I'm not a structural engineer, and <laughs> I'm not an architect, and it, it really astonishes me every time I look at any structure people actually succeed in building it and building it accurately and what about the cooling tower isn't that isn't that fantastic now if you look yeah. you can see some straight lines there and in fact the cooling tower shape um it is it is made up entirely it's a ruled surface in fact and it is made up entirely of straight lines so if you imagine infinitely many straight lines, as you see, like the ones you see drawn, but sort of going all the way around, there you have a cooling tower. We see cooling towers um, in, in, the, um, uh, in, in, our, in our countryside. And here you see the waist, or weight, if, you, if, it was a, if it was a human, he might put his belt, okay? If, if you, um, if you do draw the lines more 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 vertical um, than those, then the the waist or is 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 um, thicker, so your cooling tower is 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 less of a a, a shape uh, where you know it's pushed in, and what you see where you see through the sides that is a those are hyperbola, so the white space behind 
um, the two edges, or the two curved edges there are, hy are hyperbolas. Okay, so, so what you're saying is in the extreme, if you made them complete, those lines completely vertical, you basically have a cylinder? Yes. Would that be correct? And yes. then by, by turning the line, by, by angling them more and more, you're, you're creating a hyperbolous shape that's causing the waste. And then the, the more angled those lines are, the narrower the waste. Mm. Is mm. that going to is the extreme going to be that it's flat and it's a circle? Yes, yeah, yes. A cylinder and then yes, not interesting. I hadn't thought of the, the sort of dynamic view of that, Caroline. How interesting. Okay, well we need to move on. And this oh, is straight lines favorite. in nature. Daffodils. My favorite. It's my favorite flower. Well, we when Caroline and I first talked about doing this hour, we thought, oh, there aren't many straight lines in nature. And then I had to think again about it. Caroline suggested the honeycomb, and there it's the wax. The of course it's a it's a packing of hexagons, and the, it's the wax that's forming straight lines. Ooh. Although if you look very closely, they're sort of a little bit wobbly <laughs> straight lines. <laughs> and well, uh, so, no one's perfect. <laughs> the same can be said of the spider's web. I mean, they are more or less straight lines, but not perfect straight lines. Well, I tell you when they are, though, Tony, is where the ones in between, I mean, you can see that there's ones that are curvy, but you can have really, really straight lines if it, there's no weight on them. Super mm. straight lines, if it's just one line where the, the oh, when it comes down vertically, you've got straight mm. lines there. The spiders mm. can create straight lines, it's mm. just that other forces um, come mm. to play. And, and and influence the shape but the spider can be can make a straight line <laughs> and, and Caroline mentioned the daffodils lovely aren't they they're in bed, bud there and very soon we'll have our daffodils <clears throat> in England they're not quite out yet um, maybe people have seen the first daffodils and above that picture of daffodils there's um there's ice on a on a little pond there now that's been a man made pond which is but what i think is so interesting is about the cracks in that in the ice i mean we we in in this country well people by age anyway are used to seeing frost on the window in the days before central heating that's a similar sort of phenomenon, isn't it? I think that's it's, well. Yeah, I mean, that's actually another another point because you've got crystals, of course, that give you that make straight lines, and of course, frost on windows that gives you straight lines as well. But this is extraordinary. I've never seen anything like it. You've got triangle, lots of triangles, all kinds of triangles. Isn't it brilliant? It's different. It's amazing. I want to make that happen. How do I make that happen? <laughs> you can experiment, Caroline. Uh, you want to put dishes of, of, of water out when it's, you have to do it soon because we <clears throat> these overnight frosts, we will soon be past them or soon be into spring. And of no, course, I've never, I've never seen it. Yeah, go on. You, on the right, you've got, top right, you've got the palm fronds. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Yeah. And uh, on the bottom left, you've got an avenue of, I think they're silver birches which are quite beautiful i think somebody's planted them in straight lines but they do mm. grow up more or less straight don't they well i mean even the the masks masks there masks in boats they these days they don't tend to be wood but there was a time when they were all wood and that they had to come from really straight strong hardwood trees there was no yes, had, yes. so yeah they trees make straight lines Yes. And if you just chop off a little small part of a branch, a little twig, that can be a lovely straight line. It's great straight mm, lines in mm. nature, all over the place. Uh, and I haven't got a picture of one, but I heard that you can grow a walking stick. I heard it mm. in Gardener's Question Time yesterday, that there's a, there's a plant that's called the walking stick plant, and it grows so straight that people actually, and it, goes, it's, it's, it is wood, sort of, I think. It grows very fast. And um, you can grow your own walking stick. So why don't you plant a walking stick, Caroline? So, but by the time you you need it, it'll be it'll be ready for you to cut and use. 
<laughs> Sounds like an excellent idea. Can I pass it in your garden? <laughs> <laughs> and um, the other only picture we haven't talked about is Fingal's Cave there. And isn't that beautiful? I I was I I went there on a, a boat and um oh it's just mind blowing. Uh, they do take boats into the cave too. It's a bit dark, you can't actually see the cave very well in the photo. Um but those those basalt, I think they are columns, um, are natural of course, and um they they actually um make one think of crystals in nature, of course, because <clears throat> crystals are, um, the edges of them are always straight and uh, nearly, and th th that's, that's another straight structure in nature. And then you mentioned um, a Giant's Causeway, Caroline. So just across the water, where, where Fingal's Cave is in Scotland, which is actually quite close to Northern Ireland. There's a place in Northern Ireland that's got lots of hexagons, just like a honeycomb. And it, the, the rocks, because of frost and because of the, the type of rock itself, because of water getting in and, and freezing and then opening up, just make lots and lots of hexagons. It looks like a honeycomb. And there's a myth, legend has it, that Northern Ireland was once home to a giant named Finn McCool. Um, that's the English way of saying his name. And there was another giant, Ben and Donna, across the Irish Sea in Scotland. So he would have been in 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 your cave. And now he, Ben and Donna, threatened Ireland. So Finn retaliated by tearing up great chunks and hurling them into the sea, and basically destroyed somehow destroyed the the, the connection between the two the two lands. And so that, that Ben and Don couldn't come and threaten Northern Ireland. And so that's, that's why it's called a causeway, of course. Yes, yes. And oh well, I wonder if Finn knows that story. My my one of my grandsons is called Finn. Can I tell the joke? Can I tell the joke? Please do. Right. I ordered a takeaway from the local Chinese last night. I ordered a twenty-three, a thirteen, a thirty-one, and a seventy-nine. But I had What's to take funny it about back. that? What's funny, I had to take it back. It tasted a little bit odd. <laughs> well, straight lines that are actually curved or curved lines that are actually straight. Um, <clears throat> now here, I have selected a few pictures that show a sort of link between maths and art. And um, what you see just below in the bottom half, just towards the right, you'll see somebody's hands and the grid lines, and you'll see how these how these pictures are actually drawn. What you've got is straight lines, but the edges of those straight lines make what appears to be a curve. And the mathematical word for that is an envelope, not the sort of thing that you um, put a letter in and then lick the flap and put it in the post box, but um, not that sort of envelope, but this is a mathematical envelope. And here you have some wonderful um, pictures made in that, in that fashion. And first of all, the amazing picture up on the top of Anthony Hopkins. Did you recognize him? I did, look. most definitely. He looks like Hannibal the Cannibal. <laughs> <laughs> and look, look, look closely. Can you see the straight lines? I can see the straight lines. He's actually made, I can, you can't see it so much on the facial features, but you can definitely see it on his shoulder, his ears, below his chin. And it's, and it's all made straight lines. It's amazing. Now, it's so, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, that's real art. Now, if you I mean, this look, is where maths, maths and art. I mean, this is a really obvious place where maths and art come together because you can make art using geometry, basically. Well, I think you know, there's a lot of art in what you see on uh, here. I mean, the one below uh, Anthony Hopkins. What has happened there is <clears throat> the the artist there has played with this idea. And in a lot of different ways, and 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 sort of put them together, considering you know carefully how he assembled the 
the different designs and i think that's and i think that's really striking yes and some of some of these straight lines are not actually straight i think they're drawn freehand especially the tree yeah the tree you can see very clearly some of the lines are curved but other ones they really look curved and if you look very closely they're really not um like the the one to the right of the tree but i think they are freehand i'd agree with you there but, but some of them are very it's not very done very precisely but i think they are all straight lines but some of them are freehand, but some of them are actually part of an envelope, just as you see in the other diagrams. Um, the one on the top right extreme is, is definitely all carefully drawn straight lines. Um, the one next to it, which is rather similar, um, I'm not sure whether that's um, free drawing or whether it's um, the, just the resolution in the picture that makes it look a bit... Uh, as if the lines are not quite straight. Um, so we have got quite a few different examples here. Now, if you go to the uh, link that's shown there to the Aiming High website, and you go to this construct circle and line patterns, it is in the description. You'll find there are not just one, there's many, many, many different activities that help you uh, to, to draw similar patterns to what you see here. Now the difference, and, this is, and one of the, this is a great activity for a child who wants to do something. You want them to do something educational. Well, this is an activity that they can do, that they can love doing, and at the same time, it's it's edifying. It's maths and art, and there's a lot of maths in it. But for um, people who like to to do things that um you know with art it's 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 great fun and the bottom right there there's one this is a bit exceptional to the rest it's certainly maths and art straight lines in art but somebody there has been experimenting with the idea of perspective and drawing straight lines and um they're cuboids but you you see them in all sorts of different ways if you keep looking very clever that one Remember what we're talking about. This is um, curved lines that may be straight. And what you see on the top right there, oh no, just the right, is air routes. Air routes from Europe to Indonesia and uh, to the east, and air routes from Europe to North America. And I think it explains, shows you very clearly how some of those air routes between Europe and, say, Canada and even going to New York actually go up towards the North Pole. They go up towards Greenland. Um, that seems a bit odd to some people to be on a flight from London to New York that takes you up over Greenland, Hudson Bay and the like. Um, so why am I saying that these lines are curved lines that are actually straight? Because well, the flatlanders are wrong. The world is actually spherical. <laughs> yes, that's true. But the but a bit more that is true, but a bit more than that. The point is the air routes are the lines of shortest distance. And that is really what a straight line is. It is a line of shortest distance. And even if you, I'd shown you that on a, those airlines on a globe, you still have to agree that they were circles. Okay. <laughs> so you can have a circle that's actually a straight line if it's on a globe or if it's just above the globe, if it's an airline. Isn't that right? Like, so isn't it's, that it's a line that goes from A to B and it doesn't wobble, it just goes straight from A to B. And the shortest possible line is a straight line, even though it's curved, because it's and on I, the surface of a of a, a sphere or whatever surface it's on. And on the globe, a straight line is a great circle. And everybody knows about the great circle, the big the one obvious one, which is the equator. And all the lines of longitude are great circles. They Actually, the plane through them cuts the globe in half, um, but there are many more great circles. In fact, between any two points, there's a great circle. So if you were to go from 
say, somewhere in um, Indonesia. Well, any two uh, points uh, form part of a great circle. Yes, it's on a great circle. So if you were on to go from yeah. mm, if you were to go from Indonesia, say to uh, to Mexico, um, it, the air route would take you on a, a great circle. And if you went all the way around the globe, this would be a complete great circle around the globe. But it doesn't go through the North keep, Pole. Keep going in a straight line, and yeah, you will end up back in Indonesia and have 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 traversed a great circle. Mm. Nice. And on the left, you've got what is called stereographic projection. Now, this explains mathematically um, how um, the points on the surface of a sphere can be projected onto the flat horizontal plane in black as you see it. Okay. okay. So you see all the lines are from the North Pole and they all go down inside the sphere um, as chords, if you like, and they pop out of the sphere and then they carry on straight and they hit the um, plane, the black surface. And you see <clears throat> that on the right, a circle, which you see has spokes of a wheel, that one. When you see its image, it's only showing you three points, but the image of that circle is a circle on the plane. It doesn't actually show you the image of the spokes, but you can imagine those. The other circle, is uh, appears a straight line. So circles through the North Pole uh, come out as straight lines. And you see the two um, little curves, which are actually parts of great circles on the sphere. And you see them projected on the uh, plane. And you put tangents between uh, to each of those lines. The angle between the tangents, alpha, is preserved. So it's an angle-preserving map. Angles between lines are the same, whether you <clears throat> see them in the projection, as in the map on the right, or whether you see them actually on the surface of the sphere. Tony was going to cover one of my absolute favorites. Is he an artist? He is he a mathematician? What is he? He's just amazing. Ish Escher. Now, Escher, we... I could. We should do a whole program on Escher, Caroline. Let's. Let's, Tony. Let's. Um, but here you see his three geometries. Now he started off doing very, very geometrical art, and then I think oh, I'm not sure who contacted whom, but Coxeter in Canada, who was a very, very well, well known uh, geometer, uh, and Escher got together. And um, my husband and I knew um, Coxeter quite well. And he told us that he learned quite a lot from Escher and Escher learned quite a lot from him. Isn't that marvelous? Um, so Escher's ability to visualize saw things in geometry. And um, of course, um, Coxeter spent his whole life studying geometry first in England, and he was a student here in Cambridge, and then in um, Toronto. So here we have Escher, three pictures showing three geometries, and we've got some more slides, and we're going to talk about spherical geometry, Euclidean geometry, and the difference between them. And here you have a, a, a tessellation of angels and devils. So look at them, aren't the devils? Frightening. And aren't the angels beautiful? Okay. And I think that woodcut on the left, it's a woodcut. Isn't that beautiful? It's amazing. It's a ball, it's a sphere, and it's a tessellation just like the one in the middle. Now, the one in the middle is Euclidean geometry, which people learn at school. And the majority of people really think there is only one geometry. Um, and of course, um, that's because they've, uh, that's the only one they've learned about. But the other geometries are just as important. And it was really Einstein who woke everybody up to the fact that um, the curvature of space, okay, and how important this is to us all. And he was taking us into the realm of the geometry on the right, which is hyperbolic geometry. 
And there, one model for hyperbolic geometry is what we call the unit disk. And um, would you believe it that all those angels and devils in the geometry on the right are the same size? Now, they don't look the same size. I'm sorry, they don't. But that's because we have got Euclidean eyes. And because we're used to inhabiting a Euclidean space, and somehow we're not big enough or small enough, I'm not sure, <laughs> to be able to view the angels and devils in hyperbolic space and to understand that they're all the same size. But there's an excuse actually for us, and that is that distance is defined differently in hyperbolic space. Okay. And of course, of course, we can't do justice to it in a few minutes because some people spend their whole lives um, devoted to hyperbolic geometry and um, all, all the ways and different ways it can be applied. And some people think it's very pure um, and, oh, my goodness, you know, why would a mathematician want to study it? It's very pretty, but is it useful? Well, I assure you that hyperbolic geometry is very useful. Not only did Einstein tell us in the theory of relativity how useful it was in studying the universe, but there are many, many other applications. So that, I think, is wonderful. Now, here we have a, a, an illustration of the three geometries. Mm. And okay. the difference, there's the hyperbolic, yeah. The difference between them. And you can see on the left, Euclidean geometry. And we all learn that the angles of a triangle add up to two right angles, don't we? Yes, but do they? Well, the answer is, <laughs> <laughs> the answer is no. The answer is, well, yes and no. It depends on which geometry you are in, okay? So let's go to spherical geometry, because in reality, that's where we live. I mean, you know, as Caroline said earlier, we're not flatlanders, are we? Okay. And those red lines on the sphere you see there, they're great circles. And they're the straight lines of that geometry. And... Does it look like the angles add up to 180 degrees or two right angles? No. No. The, ang the angles add up to more than two right angles. Wow. Okay, so another non-Euclidean geometry is the hyperbolic. And there you see a triangle. Uh, this is a different model. This is the hyperboloid model, and it's like the cooling tower. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is a model of hyperbolic geometry. And uh, in, in the geometry, you can have either that model or you can have the unit circle model. They're both equivalent. You can go from one to the other and everything that you can describe in one is exactly, you can describe it, you know, absolutely, you know, word for word, bit for bit. Wow. exactly the same in both but here's the hyperbolic model and um, the triangle there do the angles of the triangle add up to less than two right angles exactly two right angles as in euclidean geometry or more than two right angles the, and this is this is studying it theoretically might not sound terribly relevant but this, these occur in real in real life you've got these saddles between two mountains exactly that shape where they go up and and join in the middle and then they go down on either side even we've got it on our hand as well alan was telling was showing it wasn't it we've got it between our our thumb in that oops in that yes. thing, that section there of the hand you've got this this up and down and and, and sinking in between it's 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 a very real it's a very it's a shape that we encounter in our lives banana a banana oh there you go a banana yes a banana uh, and you <laughs> see the triangle there the angles add up to less than two right angles i'm going to do math obviously. on my banana next time i have one <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now we're going to move on to Euclid's parallel postulate. 
um, deep stuff here, but very old. And it was number 29, apparently, to Euclid, and he proved 28 theorems before he needed to introduce this one. Um, but actually, we usually call it his fifth postulate. I'm not sure why. Uh, so given any straight line, imagine it, close your eyes and think, given any straight line and a point not on it, there exists one and only one straight line which passes through that point and never intersects the first line, no matter how far they are extended. Got it? Okay. So, got it. okay. So that seems to be, has to be true. Can't imagine anything but a world in which that was true. But as you were not going to be surprised because of what we said earlier, it's, <clears throat> only true in Euclidean geometry. It's not right. true in the other geometries. If okay. I were to say Euclidean geometry basically represents the world as flat in 2D, would that be... No, because it also includes 3D shapes, doesn't it? Yes, but it... Everything, yes, but it... If I were to generalise true. It. It's all about... But it's all about this postulate. It's all about the angles adding up to exactly 180 and parallel lines. And parallel it's, lines, okay. Yes, okay. Now for centuries, many mathematicians believed that this statement was not a postulate, but rather a theorem. And they, they spent hundreds of years trying to prove it as a theorem. And then, it, and then finally, it was proved that it, it could, um, that part of the geometry which could be derived using only postulates one to four came to be known as absolute geometry. And then there's a bit more geometry that it, well, it really is a postulate. In other words, what these geometers proved was that you, you couldn't prove it from the other 28 and therefore it stood on its own as a, as a postulate. Here you have what I think everybody was visualizing, which was the straight line through C and D, and the arrows mean, well, that's only a line segment. The arrows mean that you've got to imagine it going on forever. And as we've discussed before, the wonderful thing about mathematics is you can go to infinity, which yes. you can't do in reality. Yes, and that's, okay. that is the wonderful thing about math. You really can simulate infinity using mathematics so none of the blue line segments actually intersect the black line but they would if you as it were produce them if you drew them longer mm. the parallel is the red one so there's only one parallel through e that never meets the line cd even if you extend them both infinitely in both directions and of course, we've got examples of parallel lines in railway tracks. Even if they were only slightly off the parallel, they'd meet sooner or later. <clears throat> and that would be a disaster for the railway track. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> yes. OK. Now, <clears throat> is the par pa parallel postulate true in spherical geometry? Here, we're looking at the geometry of the, on the surface of a sphere. And get, so what is the parallel postulate? Is given a line and a point not on the line. Well, we ask how many lines can be drawn through the point that are parallel to the line? Well, there's only one in Euclidean geometry. So what about um, spherical geometry? It's, well, it's false, actually, because as we talked about airlines on the globe, once you understand that the straight lines in the geometry are actually great circles, right, they, all, all the lines intersect each other. So there are no parallels. Of the, of the, great, of the great circles. 
Yes, but the the lines yeah, you I'm see not, the I'm lines. I'm not sure of, if you see the lines of latitude there. They don't seem to be intersecting each other. No, so. but they're not. But they're not straight lines. They're true circles. They're not straight lines. Because but they, only the great circles are straight lines. Exactly, because the oh, straight. Okay. So if you were on, if you were in well, in London, and you wanted to get to America, right? You wouldn't head mm. along a line of latitude. You wouldn't head you east, um, west, would you? Right. No. Yeah. Um, so the straight lines, you've got to remember that in spherical geometry, the straight lines are the great circles. And that's why from London to New York, you go up above the, uh, up towards the North Pole. Okay, so you're, you're following, to take the short, okay, to take the shortest route, you, which is where you started off, you have to follow the great circle. Therefore, the only and, and that is kind of the definition of a straight line in spherical geometry. So, so if you're following a great circle, there are no parallel lines. Exactly, circles. exactly. To put it okay. another way, to put it another way, um, in, in spherical geometry, the only straight lines, shortest distance between two points, the only straight lines are great circles. Right, okay, okay. So there are, yeah. okay, so there's no such thing as parallel lines in spherical geometry. Mm, so spherical we, we, geometry. We, think of, we think of parallel lines everywhere in our, in our world, don't we? I mean, we make furniture and the edges are parallel. We build the room, I look around, everything's parallel. Picture frames, edges are parallel. There's right angles at the corners. Most of what, well, I don't know most of what we make seems to be straight lines and parallel lines. So what, what we manufacture is mostly Euclidean. But I all... bet there's no parallel lines on a banana. <laughs> well, let's look at the hyperbolic geometry. Okay. Caroline, look at this picture. What does it tell you? Okay, so let's see. Let me think what I've learned so far. We're looking for the two short, the short, blah, blah, blah. the shortest point, but the shortest path between two lines is going to be our straight line. Now, how do I know in hyperbolic geometry? Because I can visualize it on a sphere, but I'm, I can't, I can't even begin to visualize what's going on here because you've told me. That with those angels and devils, they were demons. They were they were actually all the same size. So I'm <laughs> I'm not even going to I'm not even going to attend it. I'm going to assume that the red line is a straight line. They're all straight lines, Caroline. They're all, all straight lines. They're yes, straight and lines. Um, let's let's introduce a different word because I think it might help. You see, one of the problems in this conversation is the fact that we keep talking about lines and straight lines and mm -hmm. curves that are really straight mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. oh my goodness so uh, there's a word called geodesic okay. okay now a geodesic i thought i think the geo in the in the root in, in the root of the word there must mean something to do with the earth actually I, i'm not quite sure right. I'm, I'm not a linguist and desic yeah. it must be something to do with a design but anyway this is a mathematical word and it means the shortest distance between two points is on a geodesic okay, okay. i'm going to write that down shortest distance between two points is on a geodesic okay okay go ahead so l is the red one okay l1 l2 and l3 are all geodesics so they're straight in this geometry and this is a model of hyperbolic geometry and the straight lines it turns out if you do all the maths which um, is quite complicated um, it, it, the straight lines are arcs of circles sort of Euclidean circles that are that cut the outer circle at right angles look at those lines the geodesics l right l1 angles. oh okay they, so any 
wait a minute. Would it be correct to say that any two points on the circle, if joined by a line that's 30 degrees, would be a, a so we could have a teeny weeny little like between where L3 touches, we could have one just adjacent to it as long as they're then 90 degrees. Yes. Both. So that still would be not a straight line, it would be a geodesic. Yes. And you I, see I, a... I'm definitely not comfortable using the word straight line with this. <laughs> So you see, a, you see there a unit disc, which looks like a Euclidean circle, okay? Yeah. And you imagine the diameters. Now, the diameters are really do look straight to us because we've got Euclidean eyes, and mm -hmm. they are also perpendicular to the edges. So right. they, are, they are the exceptional geodesics in this geometry. Now, mm -hmm. so, th so, right, through the point P, not on the line L, right? Mm -hmm. Do those other lines cut the red line? So is it true that two that line, parallel lines basically don't touch each other? Um, I have no idea. I haven't a clue. It looks like it. Looks like it's true. Going back to Euclidean geometry, there's only... I can't believe I have Euclidean eyes, so I, I can't trust my eyes. <laughs> So if you have a straight line L and a point P not on L, in Euclidean geometry, there's only one line parallel to L through P. Right? Okay, and is that L1? No, not in this diagram, my dear, because this isn't Euclidean. I'm imagining, I'm saying... Oh, sorry, Euclidean. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I thought we were so talking about this in, one, yeah. but, Oh, sorry. In that... That in this geometry, every so there are infinitely many lines through P that don't that that don't meet L. So there are infinitely many parallels that don't oh. go to L. So oh in my Euclidean, goodness! To, in Euclidean geometry, there are no. Uh, there's only one parallel line through P. Parallels to the li line L. In spherical geometry, there are none. None. Because the great circles always intersect. And in hyperbolic geometry, there are infinitely Infinite. many parallels. I love it. Oh, and maths. Isn't math amazing? It's like it, it all comes together in the end. It's brilliant. We could have filled the rest of the day with, with talk about all these things. But... Oh, my goodness. But no, that was beautiful. Oh, my goodness. I definitely learned something there. Now I've got to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> so, see you next week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tony. For greater understanding and enjoyment of mathematics, the Maths Toys YouTube channel is brought to you by AIMSEC and the Aiming High website. In the description, you will find a link to our home learning guide for ages 4 to 18 and a teacher resource pack. If you find this video useful, there is a GoFundMe link in the description to donate to and support AIMSEC. The money goes to bursaries for professional development for teachers in disadvantaged communities around the world. Subscribe, comment and ding the notification bell to make sure you don't miss our latest activity.